Another really simple way to do this, pick up your LA Times calendar section. What movies in your LA Times calendar section actually represent the kind of movies you want to make? Are they the ones that have those two-page big four-color ads? Or are they the ones with that little teeny post-it stamp size ad on page 10? What you're going to find out, and then when you look, what you're going to see is there's a direct correlation between those ads and the size of the box office. Go to Box Office Mojo online. This is free. Everybody's got to know this exists. You need to start tracking the films online that represent the ones that you want to make, both domestically and overseas. Are the movies that are like the ones that you want to make doing just a few million dollars or less, or are they doing tens of millions of dollars? I want to see a show of hands on this one. I did this a month ago. It was unbelievable. How many people here have been in a Walmart in the last six months shopping in the DVD section? There's like six of you, okay? You have got to go to Walmart. And I'll tell you why, listen to this. You gotta see whether the movies that you wanna make are actually in the Walmart, and you have to see how they're being distributed. Are they sitting there on the shelf with a lot of facing, with the, with the covers facing out and a lot of facings, or are they not even there? 40%, the statistic is staggering. 40% of all packaged media sales in the US happens at a Walmart. You don't need to make films for a Walmart consumer, but I'm telling you, you ignore them at your own peril. Kevin wanted to know what financiers are thinking about. They're thinking about what sells at Walmart. Now go to your TV guide. Where are the movies that you have in your bag most represented? Are they on the major networks or major cable stations that are, that are paying millions of dollars? Or are they on IFC, which plays fantastic stuff, but they only pay a fraction of that? Again, I'm not making a value judgment on what a good or bad movie is. I'm just telling you that, there's a, that there's, there's a certain kind of demand for each kind of movie. You have to pay attention to these things. There's a reality to demand for one kind of movie versus another. And the answer to these questions is going to help you determine the job you have ahead of you and whether it's worth your time. When you complete your financial evaluation, you have to ask yourself, do the potential revenue streams on this movie actually support the budget I'm making for? Is there adequate distribution in the marketplace for the kind of movie I want to make? Susan had great passion for her documentary, and I love her passion. She's fantastic. But she didn't have enough information about her budget, and she didn't have enough information about the distribution options available to her. She needed to figure out ahead of time the answer to many of these questions that she had to learn the hard way. It's not okay in this business just to have a dream. You actually have to have a plan. Lastly, keep your ears open for general marketplace information that might make your project more or less interesting to potential financiers. If you look at the theatrical release calendar, we're living in a whole new reality. Studios and independents are going to release 40% less films this year than they did four years ago. And in 2011, there's going to be fewer still. But the good news about that is you actually have less competition. The truth is there's an enormous opportunity for all of us right now. Over the same time, box office has been healthy. But you may be surprised to hear who's actually going to the movies now and who's not. According to an industry data source called NPD, from 2004 to 2009, the fastest declining audience in America is boys 18 to 24, that same audience that everybody thinks is voracious for movies. According to that same data source, the fastest growing audience in America today is males 55 and older. I'm not that old, by the way. <laughs> now, lay this math over this, some of this year's successful films. You're going to find movies like Our Own Expendables. You're going to find Warner Brothers' The Town. You're going to find Summit's Red. As independents, you have an opportunity to stay on top of these trends, identify these opportunities, and move more quickly than your studio competitors. It's been a huge key to everything that I've been able to do in my career. You actually have the ability to move quicker. Your major asset is your creative agility. When you use it effectively, the market's going to reward you like never before. After putting your project through this creative and financial filter that I've talked about, it's time to ask yourself a question again. The question, is, the question is pretty clear. Does your project fit within the context of what the market is telling you it actually wants? Is it willing to pay you for that project? It's the time for you to ask yourself, do you act, should you actually have that long, long love for this particular project? 
It's okay to fall out of love with projects if they don't fit your creative or financial evaluation. You have to do that if you want to be successful in this business.